Now, it is results day in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, with A-level students finding out if they made the grade. Though many will find themselves disappointed, as one in three will find their results have been marked down in the absence of exams. Pupils in England will get to choose from three options to determine their results. The first option for students is to accept the calculated grades given to them today. But if their mock grades were higher, pupils have the choice to upgrade their results to the better mark. They'll have to go through an appeals process and their school will need to submit evidence before the mock result can be used. And then there is this third option in this so-called triple lock. Students who are unhappy with their results can sit exams in the autumn to try and get a better grade. And we're being told that GCSE students are being given the same guarantee with their grades. And of course, those results for them will be coming out next week. Now, you have been sending in your questions about this year's exam results all day, and I'm pleased to say I am joined by two-thirds of our panel of experts uh, to help answer those questions. Deborah Humphreys, the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Brighton. We're expecting Mary Kernock cook the former Chief Executive of UCAS, to join us. And we are joined by Natasha Devon, a trustee of the Mental Health Charity Student Mind. So, very warm welcome to you both. Thanks for joining us. So, listen, let's start with you, Deborah Humphreys. Of course, an incredible incredibly stressful day for students but also for universities because of these last minute changes there has been a great deal of uncertainty hasn't there uh, well, uh, hello and um, delighted to to contribute it, th there has been a considerable degree of uncertainty in the last 24 48 hours um, but I'm really pleased that uh, as ever higher education and certainly the University of Brighton um, has a flexible approach is mindful that actually for students, for our applicants, this is the most stressful time for them. And we're here, we're open, we're flexible, and we're here to listen, we're here to help them on their journey. So my major message to all applicants is no matter what the situation, please don't panic. Your universities are here waiting to help you. So uh, we will do everything we can in what is an extraordinary set of circumstances. It, it, it is extraordinary, isn't it? And Natasha, I will come to you in a second, but I want to kick off with this first question uh, from Matt, which uh, goes to you, Deborah. Um, how do I, and I know this is a difficult question to answer, uh, the question from Matt is, how do I appeal a grade? Will I definitely get my mock grade? Or is there still some doubt? Uh, so, good question, Matt. And uh, I only wish I could give you greater certainty. So at the moment, we're all waiting to hear from Ofqual about what the process would be for appeals. At the moment, I probably know as much as you do, Matt, about what that process would be. I know that Ofqual have um, committed to making that available literally within the next few days. So please watch them, watch them. The first step is to do this through your school or your college. That's the really key route at this stage. Have that conversation with your school or college. And certainly the feedback we've been having through social media is that lots of people have been speaking to their schools about how they appeal. And the schools don't know, but obviously with these last minute changes, uh, off call only finding out yesterday, we do understand these are unprecedented times. Right. Listen, I'm pleased to say Mary Kernock cook joins us, the former chief executive of UCAS. Thanks very much uh, for joining our clinic this afternoon. We've just been discussing uh, what an incredibly unique set of circumstances uh, students are facing this year just before I go into any of the viewers questions uh, just a question to you Mary if, if you'll indulge me on whether you think that the government's sort of calibration process has been a good one look I think um, as with so many things uh, with this corona crisis um, Lots of things have gone wrong for everybody and gosh, haven't they gone wrong for people taking exams this year? Um, unfortunately, there is just no way that you can have a 100% fair process when people haven't actually sat down in front of their exam papers and shown what they can do on the day. So, uh, yeah, I feel very sympathetic to students, but I also feel sympathetic to the uh, Ofqual and the government and the regulators because I, I don't think there was ever a perfect solution for this and, and I think one of my pieces of advice would be try not to take it too personally because um, it isn't you know a piece of exam answer paper that a student has written that is connected to their grade it's 
a combination of pieces of data from the from the school and the moderation process that the regulators have done and things will have gone wrong on an individual basis and I feel really sorry for those people but um, uh, the advice to get to your school or college and appeal if you think something has gone wrong uh, is the best possible advice. Uh, well let's dip into some of the questions then that we've had from our viewers and our followers on Twitter and we've just chosen this one from Ellen but Natasha this represents a whole tranche of really similar messages to be perfectly honest. Uh, Ellen wrote during lockdown I struggled with my mental health and I have got downgraded results how can I now motivate myself to revise and to cope with autumn resets? Well, I think the first thing to say is that pretty much everyone that I have spoken to, and that's a lot of people, have in some way struggled with their mental health throughout lockdown. Because it, if you're not feeling anxious, if you're not feeling a bit low right now, it's probably because you're not paying attention. You know, people keep saying that it's unprecedented circumstances for a reason. But having struggled with mental health difficulties myself, what I will say is that each time I've had to learn a new technique to cope, um, I have another weapon in my arsenal that helps me to be more resilient and also helps me to learn better or to focus better on my work. So try and see this blip that you've had with your mental health as an opportunity. It's taught you something about your mind and how it works. And you can apply that when you go back to your studies. And I would also say check out Student Space, um, that's studentspace.org.uk. That's been set up by Student Minds, and it's a whole hub that students in England and Wales can access. And there's loads of advice on there on how to support yourself with your mental health. OK, Natasha, fantastic stuff. Um, this next question for you, Deborah, and it's in relation to what the government has been asking universities to do in terms of, of to being understanding of the situation and giving it a little bit of lenience to students and allowing appeals processes to go through and perhaps holding those places open. Uh, this is from Lucy and, and echoing much of what uh, my previous question just asked Natasha. You know, what happens, she asks, if I perform worse in my autumn resets, I'm worried I won't be able to teach myself the content. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, I can just pick up on uh, and Natasha's really important point. I'm thinking, and this also leads to Lucy's question as well. I mean, at universities, we are really focused on how students make that transition from, and, and for many students not having been in school for six months, how you make that transition to university. So certainly at Brighton, we have a belong at Brighton scheme, which is bringing people in, making them feel part of the community early. It, that transition into the first year of undergraduate studies is really important. Now, in terms of Lucy's specifics about an appeal, uh, I would again say, talk to your school about the appeal process, but talk to your university. We're all here waiting to talk to you, listening to you. Um, we will focus on individual circumstances. So Lucy, please talk to the university, which is your first choice, um, all the others you have on your list. Uh, we're all trying to do the very best for you. Um, I just want to pick up now with Mary Kernock cook um, There have been allegations levelled at the government of, of inequality and of chaos today that children from um, disadvantaged or lower performing schools are coming off worse today. Um, and I don't know if you saw the former education minister, um, Ed Balls, tweeting saying, how could education ministers and senior officials possibly not have spotted that giving greater weight to teacher assessment in smaller cohort sick forms would bias results towards private schools and against large sixth form colleges? It's beyond belief. And I just wonder what your assessment of that is. Yeah, I haven't seen anything but a few snippets of the of the data yet, um, and uh, and of course this was very much what we saw unfolding in Scotland uh, last week, um, and I, I I'm I'm not sure where the where the data is published, but what what is interesting is that the data published by UCAS today about who's got into university actually shows that the number of applicants or, or students from um, poorer communities have actually, uh, the entry rate has grown faster than some of uh, the more affluent students. So it isn't kind of playing out in terms of university entrance, 
Um, uh, to, be f to be honest, I would be astonished if there hadn't been um, very careful equalities work done on the methodology for this. And, and I was just about to start reading um, a long technical document from Ofqual about it, which, which may reveal more. Um, so uh, I, I just don't have the information at the moment, but I'd be astonished if this wasn't on um, ministers and officials' radars, uh, uh you know, right from the start. Okay, uh, and perhaps you can help with this next question. If not, Deborah Humphreys, I'm hoping you can. Uh, this from Tim, who's a parent. He messaged into us at Sky News to say, how do the centre assessed grades actually work? And why are these different to the final results? Lots of confused folk out there. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a really difficult one. I mean, the centre assessed grades is the teachers sitting down and making their best estimate of what they thought each student would get. Um, so, so let's say, for example, there were five students in one class who they thought would get a grade B in a particular subject. Um, that's what they would put on uh, the assessment. Um, but they also have to rank those students. So they have to say which of those five with a B is the best student and which is the second, third and so on. And so when the regulator has done the statistical uh, moderation of all these results, they will have used that ranking, um, that's, that uh, placement that the, that the teachers have used, as well as the centre assessed grade and kind of fed that into their statistical model in order to come up with the, uh, with the awarded grade. And the other thing just to note is I could just imagine if I were a teacher and I was trying to think, you know, if a student was maybe borderline B or C, you know, your likelihood is that you would you would put them down as a B, not not a C. And so that all adds up in a very, very big system with hundreds of thousands of students and grades that adds up to a kind of artificial inflation of grades, which was what we've heard that the grade inflation would have been, you know, as much as there's been in the last 20 years if it had be, if it hadn't been moderated down. So that's why the grades are different after the statistical uh, modelling and moderation that the regulators and the exam boards have done. Now, of course, in doing that, again, they're, you know, applying statistics to, uh, you know, grades submitted by the centres, and it's not the same as having an exam paper that's written by a pupil, and that's why these individual unfairnesses will um, unfortunately have crept in. Mm, it is it's so unfortunate, isn't it? And Natasha, for these kids who, I mean, call them kids, they're young people going off to start their lives. Their lives have been on pause, haven't they, for so many months. Lots of students we've spoken to today saying it feels so surreal receiving their results today because it's been so long since they've sat in a classroom. Um, additional pressure on them, huge amount of uncertainty. Uh, and this message in um, from Susan, also a parent, asking how she can best support her child's mental health. Um, her child was downgraded, missed his place at university, and as a parent, she wants to do her very best by him. I mean, before I answer Susan's question, I just want to go back to what Mary was saying, because I've long thought that exams aren't necessarily the best way to measure a pupil's learning. They, they measure your ability to retain information and perform well under pressure, which are two skills within intelligence, but they certainly aren't all encompassing. And what teachers have done is they have use their assessment of the grade based on what a pupil would achieve on their best day. And that's probably a better and fairer indication. So the absolute brass neck of an education secretary who used to be a fireplace salesman saying that he's downgraded them because they might get jobs they aren't qualified for, I can understand why young people are feeling angry about the results that they have received today. However, um, to go to Susan's question, what I would say is, with parents, first of all, when you're feeling anxious on behalf of your child, you'll very often go to the worst case scenario. Parents have really good imaginations and they'll often assume something worse is going on with their children than the reality. So don't try and put your own experience or your remembering of what it was like to be a teenager, don't try and project that onto what your child is going through because we are living in completely unprecedented times. Ask him, ask him what support 
he would like. Ask him what you can do. Lots of open questions that don't have a yes or no answer. That won't just give you a better understanding of what's going on with him. It's actually been proven that if you can foster connection, if you can show someone that you're listening to them non-judgmentally, it actually improves their brain chemistry. So he'll walk away from that conversation with better clarity of thought. OK, lovely advice uh, there. Just, do, please do, Deborah. That. Yes? Uh, so, I mean, just, just building on Susan's question and Natasha's incredibly important point, I mean, if, if Susan's son has missed his place at university, um, again, I would say use clearing. There are a huge number of places available in universities. Um, so it, he may not have missed. It just may be there's an opportunity somewhere else. And I go back to my point about how we support certainly a range of universities, but certainly at Brighton, how we support that transition. It's an incredibly important phase in young people's lives. And, and that support is incredibly, incredibly important, that journey. It's not just about your academic learning, it's that whole adjustment. It's a huge phase and a huge step change in young people's lives. So it's incredibly important that we do that really well. Absolutely. Um, an hour ago, Mary Kernett Cook, we spoke to a selection of students who got their results today. Um, one girl we spoke to uh, called Jenna, who was really disappointed with her results, has decided to uh, defer starting her course until next year and appeal. Uh, let's just have a listen to what she had to say and I just want to get your reaction to it afterwards. I was predicted B and two C's, but I got two C's and a D. So that is really disappointing. So even though I've got unconditional offers and I am going forward to do what I want to do, I think it's unfair that even my teachers put down what I was meant to get. And they, it seems like the government and Ofqual just haven't took that into consideration and they've just made it up themselves, it seems like. It is really unfair. I do have a feeling that it may have to do with the school that you go to or where you're from exactly maybe because i live in the north is it different do i get downgraded or what i don't think it's fair at all uh, so mary can it cook it echoes the theme of the previous question that i put to you but there is so much concern on social media and from young people that we've been speaking to that perhaps they might have been disadvantaged in some way and that's certainly jenna's feelings yeah, and gosh, I I feel for for Jenna um, really. Uh, you know, it must feel it clearly feels incredibly unfair to her. And but looking at it from a, a system point of view, uh, you know, it it is not personal. And I I think I would encourage her to consider um, appealing because. Um, you know, the system isn't set up to disadvantage, you know, schools in the north or different types of schools. Um, there's, there's a, you know, a, a, an important statistical model that's got lots of data from previous years that's kind of worked out what the likely outcomes would have been for, for that school with those, with those students. Roughly how so, long, um, sorry to interrupt, just I was going to ask just roughly how long do you think that appeal process would take? And this ties into a question from another parent, Sifa. She wants to know if it will be in time for last minute university places this year if kids are appealing. So, and, and, and Deborah may uh, know as well, but as I understand it, um, universities are um, asked to keep their places open until the 7th of September and the exam boards and Ofqual will be trying to prioritise uh, university applicants who need their grades for their place um, and have those back by the 7th of September. But I, I still think there's a bit of water to go under the bridge for everyone to understand exactly how this is happening. Yeah, I think we're going to get a clear idea, aren't we, in the next couple of days from Ofqual. Um, it kind of ties into the autumn and the new term. Let's have a listen to uh, what a prospective medical student, Toby, was saying to me just an hour ago. Um, he was very worried about resitting his exams in the autumn. Have a listen to this, to Deborah Humphreys. I needed three A's, um, but I, I got a BBC. Uh, so it means that I, I can't uh, get into UK medical school. Um, but there may be options in Europe. Um, and I might uh, take a, well, I might have, well, I'm going to have to take my autumn exams. But the problem with that is they're uh, quite short and I haven't really been uh, revising. I've been reading medical books and trying to get in ahead of the course. So what an unfortunate set of circumstances for Toby Newton. His mock exam results were AAB and he was keeping some gas in the tank for his summer exams, hoping to get all A's, get into medical school. And as he said there, he got 
BBC. And during the pandemic, he's been spending that time revising the medical course, not looking back on his A-levels. Um, what sort of advice could you give to him, Deborah? So, um, Terry, don't give up on medicine. It's a fantastic career. It's a demanding course. Appeal. You've got your mock. You know what your mock results were. Um, please appeal, talk to your university. And as you're saying, you're looking at options in universities in Europe, clearly also need to factor in any impact that Brexit may have um, in terms of fees and um, applications. So appeal, talk to the university, think about other options. There, there's lots of um, available, there's lots of options available. It's an incredibly competitive environment, um, but talk to your university, talk to your school. OK, good advice. Um, Natasha, let's uh, play you a clip from Destiny, who spoke to us as well uh, an hour ago, who was talking about her mental health throughout all of this. In situations like these, we do need to be mentally strong. And um, for those that may be, you know, really disheartened or demotivated by this, it's really saddening for a, for a country as well that stresses so much on, you know, individuals' mental health. It's actually really sad. Since we got put on a hold, school was shut down. We never asked to be in this situation, and to be failed or downgraded on a test that we had never done is absolutely ridiculous. So let's see what Natasha makes of that. Absolutely ridiculous, says Destiny. Well, as I said before, I can completely understand why Destiny is angry, and I would urge her to bear that in mind next time she's called to go to the ballot box and select who she votes for very carefully. Um, I would say, however, that... You know, there are three quarters of a million A-level students who are all in the same boat. And as we've er already heard throughout this session today, universities are going to be doing everything they can to take into account the circumstances that A-level students find themselves in. So again, go to student space. There's tips there on motivating yourself to study from home. If you're worried about the friendship aspects of university, if you're worried about clearing, it's a one-stop shop for anything that might be concerning you. And remember something that I I always remember myself in situations where I feel despondent. It's something a friend told me, and it's it's only those who stop kicking who drown. I like that. That's a top tip. Um, this one to you, Mary. Will having coronavirus grades for exams never actually sat undermine us when we go for jobs? That's from Sophie. I, I really don't think so. Um, there's a sense that everybody in all walks of life, in, in employment, in, on the front line, people who've been ill and lost loved ones, let alone uh, students who've been going through exams, you know, every, everybody's had their lives affected by coronavirus. And I can't imagine that, um, that anybody will do uh, anything more than glance at any grades that might be on somebody's CV and probably not even notice the date uh, in future years. OK, Mary Kernock cook Deborah Humphreys and Natasha Devon, thank you all so much. I know lots of people had lots of questions, and thank you so much for taking the time to answer them. We really appreciate it. Well, we have uh, more information on what to do next. If you didn't get the grades you were expecting, do head to our website, news.sky.com, for more information on the available options. You just need to read our guide, what to do next, scroll down to the features section of the website, and you'll see it there.